Edward's really starting to bond with Renesme, isn't he? And I, I love that scene when they're playing piano together. How, how mm-hmm. would you say he's taken to fatherhood? Uh, I think pretty well. I mean, it's kind of, I think it's made him a little bit less worried about everything. And, and also that he's, he's a little bit more active in his life because I think he's always just had the role of being Bella's protector, even though he's just taken that upon himself to do that. But now he realizes he can actually, he's created a child, so he is actually existing. Um, and it makes him more human, I think. And that's you playing the piano yourself, presumably, as well, with, with Mackenzie? Extremely badly, yeah. They had a little girl who had Mackenzie's face, um, however they do it, <laughs> in post, put on. And she was a kind of piano prodigy, and she was four or five years old. And she was better at piano than I was, and so I didn't need to teach her anything. <laughs> and I often hear that when there's a good child actor on set, it kind of forces the adult actors to sort of be completely truthful. Well, what was your experience of working with uh, Mackenzie for you? Um, yeah, I mean, luckily she's not like the typical child. Well, I don't even know if there's a typical child actor. She's really not the, the sort of cliche of one. She's very, very, very clever and uh, and really kind as well and is a good listener. She's not a kind of showbiz kid at all. Um, no, she was really nice, but she kind of, I don't know, she intimidated me a little bit. <laughs> she was kind of, uh, yeah, she's very, very clever. And Edward says at one point, I have, I have a bad es- um, habit of underestimating you to Bella. How impressed is he with the way that she's taken to being a newborn? I mean, yeah, it's definitely better than him. I mean, he, he ended up killing a bunch of people. <laughs> so it's like, that's kind of brushed over in the story. If he's killed like 40 people. Uh, so yeah, it must be quite impressive. You know, if you're going out with someone and you're a mass murderer and, <laughs> and they end up not being a mass murderer. And as the battle approaches, it really makes everyone realize like, how much they care for each, doesn't, uh, each other, doesn't it? It's quite sort of touching. How would you describe Bella and Edward's relationship at this stage of the saga? It's a lot more adult than it is in the other ones. I mean, obviously, they have, have, they have a kid and they've, everyone's trying to kill them for years. Um, but yeah, there's, there's definitely an understanding which they both have. Uh, and it's more equal as well compared to the other movies even though Bella is constantly saving his, saving Edward's life and all the other ones at this time, they kind of... He can't complain about his life anymore because she has the same thing and she doesn't complain about it at all. So yeah. it makes it easier. And as a musician yourself, I just wondered um, whether the music on the soundtrack for this one, how sort of close to that match your own sort of personal taste. Nicky Reed obviously is on it this time as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, haven't actually, I haven't actually seen the movie yet, so I don't really know what... I love the Christina Perry song. I think that's really good. Um, but I'm not entirely sure what the other songs are. <laughs> oh, so you have a nice surprise when you actually see it, yeah. So in, in terms of the, um, the the battle itself, you you won't have probably seen the finished version of mm-hmm. that, then what was that like to shoot? Um, it was crazy, I mean, just to, <coughs> um, to suddenly be doing a massive battle, vampire battle scene in a Twilight movie, it just sort of seemed a little bit out of place. Um, and you know, seeing main characters get killed in front of you was kind of, it was actually genuinely shocking. It's crazy. And um, just finally, the film sort of plays a very fitting tribute to Stephanie Mayer's um, books at the end of the movie. How sort of indebted do you feel to her at this stage now the journey is sort of coming towards an end? Ab- absolutely indebted. I mean, it's kind of... I mean, everything came... Well, obviously, everything came from the books, but um, definitely the fan base, they kind of have... A, she's created these characters that people invest in so much like something I've never seen anything like it um, and they feel so passionately about all of the like, about these about the characters as well I mean I'm just really happy that people like them <laughs> like I mean and you know and I think Stephanie looks at her fans the same way she kind of you know I think I think even she was just as surprised at the books becoming what they were as, as we were about the films becoming what they were and it's oh. the U- UK premiere tonight. Is that always sort of a, a big one for you when it's like on home turf? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's strange because it took a little bit longer for England to kind of get into uh, get into Twilight. So the first one was I could basically walk around the streets normally and <laughs> no one recognises you. But it is funny to think you know, it's, it's big here now as well. Robert Pattinson, thanks very much. Thanks a lot. Cool.